So, anyone here have a 2020 health resolution or any goals for the new year? Oh, didn't make them. Didn't make them? Lose, lose about 20 pounds that I put on the past year. 20 pounds, okay. Yes. All right. Anything else? Anyone? Like to get healthier, fitter, make some changes in the, in the new year? Always. Always, all right, okay. Well, I hate to say it, but I got some bad news. Yep, yep. So, the bad news is, is that if you have goals to make health improvements over this coming year, and that's the, the essence of the goal, is just to, to make health improvements, to adopt healthier habits, to reach a healthy goal that is probably not going to work. Does anyone know why? Well, stick to it. Well, stick to it. It's not specific. Is it? Yeah. So, so that, that's, that's a good point. But also, it's an extrinsic motivator. So if you pursue solely extrinsic motivation, if you set out to to exercise more, to eat better, so that you can lose weight, or so you can be healthier, or fitter, or whatever it is that you're looking for. That's the, the only reason this extrinsic motivation that does not last. Right? We get you going. 2020, woo, let's, let's get healthy and fit. Let's, let's you know, get healthier and exercise more. But then a couple weeks later, it's, nah, nah, whatever. Right? No. All right, if, has anyone heard of uh, intrinsic motivation? Intrinsic motivation, that, that's when you do something just for the inherent joy of it. So if you were to find a form of exercise that doesn't seem like a chore, but it's something that, that you get to do. So like worshiping, like lifting my hands? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> what he's just been doing, for sure. So if, there, if you can find ways to cultivate intrinsic motivation, find ways to enjoy the things that will connect you with those healthy goals that you're looking for, that is far more sustainable. So if you can find, if you enjoy going for walks with your friends, not today when it's icy outside, but if you can find find ways to enjoy doing the exercise, find ways, find recipes that not only are healthy for you but taste good as well, that is at the very heart of what keeps you going. That intrinsic motivation. Okay. So today we're going to be real casual, but I'm going to give you just some more strategies, some more ways that can help you adopt the habits that will help you reach the goals that, that you're looking for. But before that, let's just perhaps do a little, how are you doing? Okay. Before that, let's just do a, a quick refresher as to what this overall healthy lifestyle is. So to give me give some feedback, ladies and gentlemen. What are some healthy habits that are good for people just as a whole? I'm going to start off with diet. What, what, what are healthy foods to eat? Vegetables, whole grains, olive oil, good protein, good fish and yogurt, man. There you go. Fish and yogurt. Fish and yogurt, chicken. Healthy fats. All right, healthy fats. Stay away from the starchy foods. Your white breads and mashed potatoes. Listen, you're getting carried away when you're eating potatoes. Settle down. Settle down. Nuts are good. <laughs> All right. Next time you have to give that yeah. presentation here, you know what you're talking about. Well, I've been trying to stick it for that for years. I mean, I don't make resolutions, and I basically weigh myself every day. Okay. Eight pounds get heavier. I know I eat more sweets and stuff that are bad, and so I try to go down in the other direction. Okay. All right. All right. Let's give her a round of applause. She's there, now she knows what she's talking about. Well, look at her. She's yeah. a gem. I'm not, I'm not surprised. <laughs> Okay, all right, so, so we got a, a pretty good, does all that make sense? I'm sure you've heard this before, what you, what you just said. Fruits, vegetables, avoiding the refined carbohydrates and starchy foods. I mean, that's, uh, I, I guarantee I'm not the first person to, to tell you this, right? So it's, uh, again, it's more of a matter of implementing it versus knowing what to do. Okay, so that's a healthy diet. What about exercise? What are some healthy exercise habits? Yes, sir? Um, in the summer, I play baseball, two seasons. All right, my man playing sports. I think that's but and, and is it fun? See, this guy's ahead of us. He's having fun doing his exercise. Most, yeah. most of us are hopping, hopping on the treadmill, doing things that aren't fun. Yes, sir. Hockey. There you go. Another another fun way to keep yourself active while having fun. 
I'm walking the dog that my wife decided in her midlife crisis to get that I'm now responsible for walking and cleaning up, so I'm getting a ton of exercise. There you go. There you go. And avoiding the stress. No, she's great. He's a, a I have her on a pair of socks already. That's how attached we are. I think she came to me for purposes. There you go. Yeah, but but no, seriously, a lot of people getting the dumbbells is a great way to keep yourself active. You enjoy that that camaraderie of having someone to, to move around and exercise. With. Okay, so we got diet, we got exercise. What else is a healthy habit to adopt? Sleeping. Sleeping. Yes, get good quality sleep, which would be not staying up late watching TV shows that don't really help you get good quality sleep. Maybe calming down, reading the book. Whatever you need to do to get that good quality sleep. Not being on your phone before you go to bed. Not being on your phone, absolutely. Yeah, calming down that stimulation, that good quality sleep. And I don't know if you guys listen, um, when you sleep, that's when you flush out what's called the amyloid beta plaques. These are things that eventually accumulate in your brain and are the hallmark sign of Alzheimer's. So you literally cleanse out your brain at night when you sleep. This is when you secrete the hormones that help you put on muscle and cut down fat and keep your immune system strong. So many wonderful things that come from good quality sleep. Okay, so we got nutrition, exercise, good quality sleep. What else? <coughs> what are you? Where are you all doing right now? The right mindset. You have to really have the right mindset. I used to be almost 500 pounds. Um, I had a 56 waist. And I end up being on a ton of medication. It was very unhealthy, um, 16 meds a day, and it literally was killing me. So I got a gastric surgery two years ago, and I'm maintaining my weight. I've you know, lost a little with the last surgery because of not eating, but um, it's this knowing that you can have so much, and then you stop. And so I have a lot of intermittent fastings. There's some days that I just do a meal, and I'll have one yogurt in between, um, and I'm maintaining my weight, so I'm happy with that. And I'm off all medication. I take nothing but a multivitamin and vitamin D. Absolutely. That's so it's mindset, though. Yeah. It's your mind. Yeah. We are taught that we have to clear our plate, and our parents used to pack our plate. And yeah, it's knowing portion size. And I have smaller plates in our house. We don't have large dinner plates. They're very small. Absolutely. Absolutely. So that the mindset, keeping just that, that healthy, positive mind, not being too stressed out. So whether, whether that's uh, the proper breathing habits or whether it's uh, doing what you're doing right now, socializing with other people, having good quality relationships with other people, with other people which I can tell it looks like you're already going to do a pretty good job. So, so I'm, again, I'm not the first person to tell you any of these things. I'm sure you've all heard it plenty of times. I just want to do a quick refresher uh, before we get into the, these other strategies that can help you put these into your lives and have them stick. Okay, so of all these things that are great for your health, uh, for your vitality, what do you do? Do you kind of... Do a complete 360 with your lifestyle and then do them all at once? No. No? no. Why not? <clears throat> right, right. The analogy I like to use is if someone's trying to learn how to juggle, they want to do all these things, they want to exercise more and eat better and start meditating and socialize more, they throw all these things up in the air and go, I give up. I'm done. It's too complicated. I can't juggle all those things at once. But if someone were to... Just pick one thing, one thing to get good at, and they give it some, some time, and, it, and it, maybe at first it's kind of kind of tricky, but then eventually they get into a rhythm with that one new habit. Then they add in the second thing, and they go, oh, okay, right? Yeah, I think I, I, think I got this. I'm, I'm now exercising and eating a little better, and now, okay. Now let's say I'll add in meditation, so I want to exercise, eat better, and meditate. Now, because you went one thing at a time, you can start to, to juggle a little better. So what one habit should someone start with when they want to make a healthier lifestyle? Okay. Is there an order in which to add them? That's what I'm asking you guys. What's, what's the one thing that you start with? The one that fits your lifestyle. There we go. Oh, what did you just went on? <laughs> the one that fits your lifestyle. The, there you go. So the one, the one. So it's an individualized thing, right? Everyone has their own strengths, their own weaknesses. So if you can find that one ball, the one thing that's going to give you the most benefit and be the easiest to implement into your lifestyle. So a combination of great leverage is going to help you get healthier and 
relatively easy to implement into your lifestyle. So say, for example, someone's been smoking their entire life. You tell them to stop smoking. They're just going to not listen to you. It's just not happening. But if you were to find someone who's completely dehydrated, doesn't drink any water, and they're open to it, they're like, yeah, you know, I, I kind of enjoy sparkling water. I could enjoy it. Maybe that's where they should start. Something that's relatively easy to implement and will give you wonderful health benefits. Dr. Knock that down, and then you go down the line of the other habits once that first one has been set into play. So, does that make sense? Okay, all right. So next, next strategy you wanna talk about is to implement these things into your lifestyle. Anyone here ever heard of using skill power instead of willpower? No. Okay, good, good, all right. These are the things that, that we really need to talk about more, right? It's how to, how, to, how to implement these things. So, skill power instead of willpower. This essentially means that you alter your environment to make it as easy as possible. So if you're trying to eat a healthier diet, and you have, let's say you've got cookies at home in the pantry and on the counter, and it's just constantly, you see it, it's gonna constantly challenge your willpower, and there will be times in which your willpower is compromised. You're tired, you're stressed out, you say, ah, I give up, I don't care, I just want something that tastes good, I want that stipulation. But if you alter the environment so you don't have those cookies there in front of you, you're not even tempted to have them in the first place, then, Willpower doesn't even come into play. It's just that skill power. You've planned ahead to alter your environment to make it as easy and as conducive as possible to implementing these things into your life. So how can you do this? I'm looking for a little feedback here. How could you alter your environment to make it more conducive to doing the things that are healthy for you? Buy those foods in the first place, absolutely. Well, like Robert said, have a smaller plate. Smaller plate, absolutely. And they actually have other things that are healthy. I mean, I find that if I had a crunch on, there's no crunch on something. And it's maybe carrots. Okay. Fennel, or celery, or celery, grapes, even, or cherries. But, you know, I just need something that. Yeah, but it takes care of for that disease. Sure. As opposed to a dish of ice cream or putting cookies. But what do you do if your spouse is constantly buying the cherry chips and the cookies and the ice cream? That's a that's 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 a donuts. Paul would say his credit card has been compromised. <laughs> 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 No, that's a great question, and, and it can be pretty challenging if you live with other people that are not quite on, on the same page and wanting to make these changes. And that's something you kind of have to figure out on a one-on-one -on -one basis, but if you could at least bring it up to them and ask them, say, I'm, I'm trying to make these changes, could, if you are, if you have to have these foods, the, the, the cookies, whatever, maybe you could hide them somewhere or just put them somewhere where I'm not going to see them and I'm not going to be tempted to have them. So that, that's one suggestion, but again, it's, all, it's kind of all individualized based on your situation. But, but I promise you, you can make, if you can leave willpower, you can keep that at a minimum and skill power at a maximum. Make it so it's not even an option to do these things that are unhealthy for you. It'll be a lot, much, much easier. What about here at the church? Yeah, right? I am going to get carried away because I care about all of you. And I want the best for you. All right, so. We have Lou and Karen. They're our nutritionists, so they always make sure that we have a good balanced meal. Okay. What about your conflict and interest with uh, experts saying that you want that is special good for you? Yeah, if not, like a wheat belly, there's a big group out there called wheat belly, and wheat's bad for you. It's yeah, wheat we, we belly. Yeah. Wheat uh, eggs are good for you, the next week they're not. And, there, so it's conflicting. Uh, uh, absolutely, absolutely. So it's a great, great question. Is you know, one day butter is good, the next day it's bad. There's always you know, there's this constant flux of what's what's healthy in terms of nutrition. There are some things that have stood the test of time. Water has always been a great thing for you. Yet most people are still pretty dehydrated. About eighty percent of our country is not drinking enough water. Yet it's still one of those things. It's just a basic core. Vegetables. Eating leafy greens, vegetables, that has stood the test of time. That has always been a healthy thing for you to eat. Refined carbohydrates, the, the white bread, the white pasta, the sugary foods, these have mostly always been a, a rather unhealthy thing for us to have. 
So there's kind of common things that have stood the test of time, and in terms of the things that are in, in flux, whether it's the eggs or the butter or, or what have you, uh, you have to, if you get good at listening to your body, it, it will do a good job of letting you know what it likes and what it doesn't. Not just in terms of taste, but in terms of how you feel. So if you eat eggs and you feel like you've got good, consistent energy through the rest of the day after having the eggs, then perhaps it is a good thing. If you eat the eggs and you feel like you're crashing a little bit later, then maybe it's not. So your, your body is much more wise than all of the other nutritionists and all the other you know, health officials out there. So pay very close attention to it, and it'll, it'll guide you in the right way. You've got a book out there, you might your blood tires. So yeah, absolutely. It falls into place most of the things that it said for my blood type. I was actually eating that before you were reading the book, so okay. there must be some truth to it, yet the, you know, how rigidly do you follow these guidelines that are set forth by these so-called so experts? Right. And the institutes have, you know, different institutes have different parameters for their, uh, their uh, levels. Yeah, absolutely. Just the more you can educate yourself, the more empowered you get. But again, I, I think the, the most important thing to do is just listen very closely to your body. Monitor your energy levels, monitor just how you feel at the different foods that you eat. I think that will give you some real broken insight as to what's most best for you. Okay, so last strategy I want to touch on here is getting really clear with your why. Why would it be important to adopt some of these healthier habits? Why is it so vitally important that you get the most out of your health and that you're as vital as you can possibly be? So I want to first put that question out to you and just try to get, get your, your perspective as to, to why it would be worth the investment to improve upon your health. I think it would increase your energy, um, increase your uh, level of activity, increase your joy. Yeah, you're gonna feel better. Yeah, you feel better. <laughs> it's you're amazing energy. to be yeah. light as I am compared to the struggle of walking and trying to carry something being so heavy. You know, it's like wow. Yeah, yeah. you get more things done. Absolutely. And so when you get better, there you go. And when you get older, it, it makes a huge difference. You might not be out all the Absolutely. Yeah, well, they keep the doctor away. Right? There you go. There you go. Absolutely. Absolutely. What about from, from a religious standpoint, in terms of being an, an extension of God, having the energy, the vitality to carry out His Word, to be the best representation of what, what a Christian can be? How important is that to you? Very. Absolutely. Our, our bodies are God's temple. Absolutely. He wants us to do whatever he is he has to do for us, whether it's planting a couple of flowers or putting up new banners, all the things that are going to be Absolutely. And outside the church. Absolutely. I promise you, whatever it is that matters most to you, your religion, your family, your friends, your dog, whoever, whatever it is that matters most to you, the more health that you have, the better you will be connected with that. The more mental focus you will have to be engaged with it, the more energy you will have to take care of it or to give to it, you have more to give when you are in a healthier state. So I promise you, this if you can get very clear on that why, why to invest in your own health. That's it's an extrinsic motivator. It's not that intrinsic, but it's still a powerful thing that can jumpstart you and get you to take a bit more action than what you might have done otherwise. So again, just to, to refresh here, get clear on that why. Why is your health so vitally important? How can you make the transition as easy as possible? How can you alter your environment to make this an easier thing to do? What's that one new habit to start with? one that's going to be as easiest for you to implement and will still give you some good leverage. And how do you make it as enjoyable and as fun as possible? And if you can follow through with these steps, I promise you you'll be working smarter than 99% of everyone else out there who's trying to improve upon their health. And uh, I care about all of you and I'd love for that to happen for you. So that's, uh, so that's what I got for the, for the presentation. If any of you do... Um, Want any, any help in terms of uh, back pain or any of you are diabetic? We've got lots of programs for uh, neuropathy, for weight loss, for uh, 
I'm as a chiropractor, I help people with back pain, so I've got some cards over here. But uh, other than that, it's been a pleasure coming to be here. I got to see the sermon last week and meet some of you then, and it's a real uh, great group of people that you got here. So, so uh, yeah, I feel um, glad I got the opportunity to come here and speak to you. Thank you. Thank you so much. If you've got any questions, I'll, I'll be around for a little bit.